I'm not sure if this is this is last week's notes still up here. I wonder if we're just supposed to do that again. Maybe not. All right. I'll ask you a question this morning. And I want your honest responses, all right? This is participation time for those of us that are uh, used to just sitting back and maybe hearing something without a response. Here's, here's this. I just, just in your response, show of hands or some sort of response, how many of you would say that you wished that we would take better care of our church? I mean, you think, wish we'd take better care of our church. Yeah. So, so let, me, let me just ask you to think for a minute. This is your response where you find a piece of paper and you jot it down and you hand it, hand it to me. But what, what would be on that list? If we need to take better care of our church, what's on your to-do list? What are the things that you see that we would need to do? Because we do need to take care of the facilities. We do need to take care of the, the buildings, the things that God has led us to build and to purchase in those things. We, we have a, a project list that grows with every little statement that's made and things, and some of those get checked off, and then about half a dozen more get added. And, and so we're, we're aware of, of some of those things. We have still some projects we're working on associated with our building campaign, some some touches with the annex and bathrooms and we put a ramp over at the office and about got some things done over there that need to be done. We, we have plans to um, and working on things in terms of remodeling uh, in here and in the foyer of this building. And so there are some plans and some things there. And so write those things down and, and share that list so that we could see what you think needs to be addressed. But now let me ask you a second question. Are there some things that we could do to take better care of the church? Wait, you just asked that question. Yeah. But you do know that the church is not the building. The church is the people. Right? So what would be on that list? What would be on that list? Because when we ask ourselves about taking better care of our church, why is it that our minds immediately go to the facility and the structure of said building, of said church. Why, why is it that we think those things? As I've reflected on life in the ministry, and here, here are some things I've noticed, and you could add to this list, but the things that the Lord's convicting me of in, in leadership and in life practice and all of that is that we'll become more concerned about a light bulb not working for a month than we will about somebody not being in our Sunday school class or sitting next to us in church for a month. Should I have prefaced this with some of this stuff is not easy? Why is it that we get more concerned or we get more worked up about a policy not being followed than we do about a new believer not learning how to follow Christ in daily disciplines? Why is it that we get more concerned about the appearance of our church building or our classroom than we are about the spiritual health of a brother or sister in Christ? 
Why is it that we're more likely to give or we would say it's just easier for me to give a few dollars to fix something than it is for me to give a few minutes to talk to somebody and build a relationship with them? Why do we get to the place where we look for the easy way out instead of a way to ease into meeting a need or developing a relationship? Because don't, don't go preach the sermon that I'm not preaching this morning. We do need to take care of the facilities that we have. We're, we're going to constantly be working on that. In fact, if I was to be honest with you, that's our default. When we think of church, let's just do something. Let's put a paint of coat on this. Let's change out this light fixture to look like this. Let's... Let's do this, let's do that, let's upgrade, let's, let's remodel, let's, let's do that. Those are the things we'll, we'll think somebody else can do that. We can give a little money, we can, we can give a little time, we can do those things. And those things are important. But if we were to, to take an honest look at who we are, that we're the body of Christ, it's a living body. This, this church, this, these walls don't breathe. But you and I breathe. And, and we need to be more so concerned about the, the, the health and the well-being and the appearance and the stability of one another than we are about our structures. It's a change of thinking from not just policy and procedure we've got to we've got to we've got to move ourselves to a place where we think about people and relationships or what we think about when we hear the word church over policy procedure and appearance i think it's one of the areas in which i've failed to lead well in as a pastor I think that it's an area that, that churches have just moved away from. It is so much easier to let somebody else do it than it is for us to invest the time and effort and energy that it takes to become a people that care about people. How do we take better care of our church? How do, we, how do we help folks that are hurting? How do, we, how do we encourage folks that are discouraged and, and struggling with depression? How do, we, how do we help a new believer in Christ to understand what it means to, to read God's Word and to and to pray and to and to go to church and to be connected to a small group and to how do we how do we do those things? We don't do it with another committee meeting. And we don't do it with another work day. We do it with sitting down with and talking. We do it with with rubbing shoulders and 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 just becoming vulnerable. We do it with effort. Romans chapter 12 says this, Let your love be without hypocrisy. Detest what is evil and cling to what is good. Listen, love one another deeply as brothers and sisters. Listen, outdo one another in showing honor to others. Don't lack diligence and zeal. Be fervent in the Spirit. Serve the Lord. Rejoice in hope. Be patient in affliction. Be persistent 
in prayer. Share with the saints in their needs. Pursue hospitality. Bless those that persecute, persecute you. Bless and do not curse. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Weep with those who weep. Live in harmony with one another. Don't be proud, but instead associate with the humble. Don't be wise in your own estimation. Don't repay anyone evil for evil. Give careful thought to do what is honorable in everyone's eyes. And if possible, as far as it depends on you, live at peace with everyone. That's just one passage of Scripture that gets my focus off of me and on to others. It gets my focus off of the stuff around me and on to the people around me. It allows me to see with eyes of compassion. We've talked about needing to fix our eyes on Jesus and see as Jesus sees. Jesus saw people. Real people with real needs and real hurts. What this world around us needs to see is not just a building that is being taken care of and, and we ought to do that, but when they step inside the building and they begin to associate with folks who call themselves Christians and say they live for a living Lord, that there's a difference in their life and how they react and interact with one another. That when we notice that there have been folks not sitting in that pew for a month and we've done something about it. That when we recognize that somebody is, is struggling and we do something about it, we care for them. Listen to this passage from 1 Thessalonians. Now we ask, brothers and sisters, that you give recognition to those who labor among you and to lead you in the Lord and admonish you. And to regard them very highly in love because of their work. Be at peace among yourselves. And now we exhort you, brothers and sisters, warn the idle, comfort the discouraged, help the weak, be patient with everyone. See to it that nobody repays evil for evil, but always pursue what is good for one another and for all. Rejoice always, pray constantly, give thanks in everything, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Don't stifle the Spirit. Test everything. Hold on to what is good. Stay away from all kinds of evil. We need to take better care of the church. How do we do that? And I just give you four thoughts that stem from those verses that I read and other places in Scripture. We need to take better care of our church. Just use the word care. We need to get better at contact. We need to... <laughs> Can y'all believe that well, maybe I'll, maybe I'll get there. How, how much effort is it for you when you recognize that there's somebody that you miss? How much effort is it for you to pick up your phone Say, hey, I missed you Sunday. Is everything all right? Or to send that text. Got a card in the mail this week. I haven't missed. But it was just a card of, hey, thanks for what you do. That cost a little bit, right? 50 cents or whatever it might be to send that in the mail. We've got to get better. If we're going to care better, then, then we've, got to, we've got to begin reaching out. 
to those that are around us that, that are there, carrying on conversations, checking on one another. Entering into a conversation that, that asks more than how was, how was your week and what's going on at work. <laughs> what's going on in your life? Contact. Checking in on and just letting folks know that we're there. So contact. Assist. Assist, help, serve, minister to one another. You're going to get tired of hearing about Acts chapter 2, but that's the church. We're not that church, but we need to be that kind of group of believers that is devoted to God's Word, that's devoted to the fellowship, that's devoted to, to just sharing in the sufferings, that's devoted to being together. That when somebody's in need, they had all things in common. And they met those needs. They were there to assist one another. They did a great job of keeping folks from falling between the cracks and folks running out the back doors. Why? Because they assisted. They cared for folks. And their caring was seen in the fact that they helped and served and ministered to one another. We need to get better at caring. The R is for relate. Building relationships with one another. Get to know. Just this past Sunday evening, I sat around the table with our direction team, which is made up of our staff. It's made up of our leaders of our different ministries that we have. Our deacon ministry and, and our men's ministry and, and those areas. And we're sitting there. And one of the things that we did was we just began to ask questions Something as simple as, if you could eat anywhere, where would you want to eat? If you could have dinner with anybody, living or dead, who would you want to have dinner with? That evolved into, when I got called out of the room, to them carrying that on and saying, hey, why don't you tell us how you met your spouse and the details around that? And we began to get to know one another in a way that otherwise we just come and we take care of the stuff that's on the pastor's agenda and on the leader, you know, what we need to do. And we can take care of stuff and the church will be better for it, but we may not be better. Because we miss the element of relating to one another and building relationships. You sit in a Sunday school classroom or you sit in a sanctuary, do you even know the people that we're sitting next to? and around do we take any time and effort and energy to develop a relationship a get to know you with other folks oh it can get messy preacher it can get messy when we get to know, they might learn this about me Man. we serve a real God don't we and we are real people we have real stuff going on in our lives. And we need to become such a group of folks that cares about one another, that will check on, that will assist and help, however that is, that we can do that. And we will build relationships with those individuals so that nobody will go through their stuff alone. That they'll have somebody. Folks, this is something we, we must make a priority for ourselves as individuals and as a church body of caring for folks. You don't pay a staff to take care of everybody in the church. You just don't. If, if that's your idea of why you pay a staff, you need to step back and reevaluate why you pay a staff. There is The, the staff is called to equip us as God's saints to do the work that His Word tells us we're to be doing. We are to lead by example. But we don't pay so that somebody else can do it and take our hands off of that. We, we have responsibilities and, and expectations within the body life of the church as well. Contact, assist, relate. And the E is encourage. How many of you all could use a, 
a bit of encouragement during your week. I mean, I'll tell you, that, that card I received in the mail, that's encouragement. I think I've told you all this before. I have files. I have, I have files full of every card I've ever gotten in 28, almost 29 years of ministry. It fits in one manila... Well, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> no. It's, it's folders full. And there are days that it's a good use of 15, 20 minutes of my time to pull one of those folders out and just begin to read a note that somebody wrote because it reminds me at some point, at some place in their life, they thought enough to stop and to send me a note. Every one of those is signed. Those that aren't signed are not really notes of encouragement, and they make their way to the trash can. All right. But encourage to, to build up. That's, that's that word. It's to put courage into. It, it's, it's to help. It's, it's, it's to care. It's to invest in. Galatians 6.10 says, Give special attention to those who are in the family of believers. It says take care of and, and invest in everyone, but give special care to those that are brothers and sisters in Christ. What have you done lately to try to care for somebody in your world? What could you do? What if we just spent as much time thinking about all the things that needed to be done at the church and I wish this group would take care of this and do this and do that and all that and all of those things are probably real and they need to, to happen. But what if we took the time to sit and think about caring for one another? Those in my home, those in my church family. Connecting. Assisting. Connect might actually be a better word than contact. Connect. Assist. Relate. Encourage. One of the translations of Romans 15, 5 says this, May God develop maturity in you so that you can get along with each other just as Christ gets along with all of us. That's probably one of those real modern deals that's way out there for some of us to even think about that being a translation but may God develop maturity in me so that I might get along with the others in my life just as Jesus gets along with all of us fellowship with one another here's, here's the thing when we take the time and give the effort and the energy to care for one another your help to me allows me to be a help to you or to someone else. Our, our helping one another. Really, as, as we begin to, to care for the people that God puts around us, we'll actually begin to see this concept that we exist to gather together, we exist to grow together, and we exist to go together, being lived out. We'll, we'll be doing the mission and the purpose for which God's placed us here as we step into developing relationship with the Father and developing relationship with one another. Recognizing how much God cares for you and taking that care that He has for you and pouring it into those around you. Maybe it's even a step of instead of being critical become caring and as we care for them and we begin to understand what's going on in their life and what they're facing and all those challenges then maybe our criticalness will be put in its place and we'll realize that there is life happening and now we're there helping them and encouraging them and assisting them and just being there with them in the midst of their life That'll be a magnet 
that will draw people to the family of God. When we learn to love Christ, love others, when we care for them as He cares for us. So I really do want your list of things that you notice that need to be taken care of around the church. But what my heart really is aching for is that you would say, I do need to do my part to take better care of the family of faith called First Baptist Church. Or the family of faith that carries whatever name they carry. It's brothers and sisters in Christ. We, we need to care for one another and quit beating up our own. We need to love on each other. And so will you make a commitment this morning to do your part to connect, assist, relate, and encourage. To shift my focus more onto people and others over myself and the facilities around me. Because I want to help our church family care better. Would you stand with me? <clears throat> Father, this morning, we just... Really, Father, we need you to to open our eyes and to help us realize how significant and important it is for us as we strive to be a church to fulfill its mission and purpose that Father we don't just say that we love people but we show it and that we show it with our life and our actions with this taking of our time and efforts and all of that and we invest that in other people that we would move from beyond just a I'm going to check it off my list that I'm here and I've done this to who can I invest in who, who could I encourage this week who might you lead me to help and assist who could I sit down and just ask a couple of questions of and just get to know them better? And who could I connect with? And that I would do my part as a part of the family of God to care for the family of God. Maybe you're here this morning and you've never trusted Jesus Christ as your Savior and Lord. I want you to know He loves you. He cared enough for you that He died on the cross for you. You can receive that free gift this morning. Maybe you're that group that already has. You know that Jesus is your Savior. You know that heaven is your home. But you'd have to begin to get honest like I've had to begin to get honest and just say, I... Sometimes I can get in my own little bubble, my own little world, and worry about me and focus on the things that are on my plate. And I forget that, God, you put me here because you desired relationship. And you created us for relationship. And that we might begin to get outside of ourselves and shift our focus from the stuff to the people that you put in our lives. You might make a commitment in that fashion this morning. Use these moments.